welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about scratch pads in Hyperland. But what is a scratch pad? Scratch pads are super cool. They're a feature mainly used in tiling window managers. When you're normally doing your tiling, you'll have your windows tiled, but then there may be an app or two that you want to be able to toggle and Scratch pads are like drop down terminals where you can just open them with a quick key bind, run some commands, and then toggle them out of your view so that you can go back to whatever work you were doing. Scratch pads are even better than drop down terminals because you can have multiple of them and they don't even necessarily need to be terminals. Scratch pads were a feature that I used all the time back when I used Xmonad. But when I switched over to Hyperland, Hyperland was totally missing this feature, and it still is. So how do we get scratch pads inside of Hyperland? The answer is a tool called Hyperland, which is a Python tool that interacts with Hyperland and adds a bunch of extra neat functionality. Scratch pads being just one of those extra pieces of functionality. If you're on an Arch-based distro, Piperland is available in the AUR. And if you're running NixOS, like I am, while Piperland isn't in Nix packages yet, I do have a working solution in my config that's installing it the quote Nix way. And if you want to check that out, it's in my Piperland.nix file, which I'll link in the description down below. But worst case scenario, if you're not on either of those distributions, or you can't find it in your distro's repos, then you can just install it with pip, or I guess pipx now, since most distros are deprecating the normal pip command. Once you have it installed, we're gonna have to add a few things to the hyperland config file, and then create another file called the hyperland.json file. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So to start off adding this to your configuration, Go to your .config slash hyper slash hyperland.conf file, and in that file, you're going to need to add exec once equals piper. This is the piperland daemon, and it has to be running in order for any of these extensions to work. Once you have that, go ahead and save that, and then we're going to make another configuration file, the hyperland.json file which goes right next to your hyperland.conf file. It's going to be right in .config slash hyper right there. This is a normal JSON file, so hopefully you're familiar with JSON, but if not, you just open with two squiggly brackets, and the first section you're going to need to add is the Piperland section. And within that Piperland section, you need to define what plugins to install. There are tons and tons of plugins available. And the full list of plugins is available on the Piperland wiki page right here. But for scratch pad functionality, you're just going to need to add scratch pads to that list. From there, you need to define which scratch pads Piperland should be keeping track of. And this will be in a second block below the Piperland block, which is the Scratch Pads block. Within the Scratch Pads block, you can add as many Scratch Pads as you would like. Each Scratch Pad must be given a name, and then definitions for a few key parameters about that Scratch Pad. I think the only one that is actually strictly necessary is the command, and this is just the command that will be run to start the terminal but there are several more that you can pass into it. One of these parameters is the margin, but there's also a few more, like what happens when the window is unfocused, whether you should hide it or keep it on the screen, and then there's also the animation type. You can have it animate from the top, from the bottom, from the left, the right, or just have no animation. And one more you might find useful is the lazy parameter. If you give any of these lazy is true, that means it doesn't automatically start the program in the background when you start 
Hyperland, it only starts the program when you actually call the scratch pad, which isn't really going to be necessary for most things, but in certain niche scenarios, you may need that functionality. Once you have your list of scratch pads defined in the Piperland.json, we're going to head back over to the Hyperland.conf file and configure these to show up via keybind. So go to wherever you have your keybinds, and you can then define some keys to toggle these scratch pads. These are done in the normal binding fashion by executing a command, and the command is going to be hyper toggle and then the name of the scratch pad. This is the exact same name that we gave these when we defined them. You may want to also add hyper CTL dispatch bring active to top, which it will be helpful in ensuring that whatever scratch pad you are toggling on will be visible over any other scratch pads that are currently on the screen. Lastly, in order to make sure that this works, you're going to have to add some window rules to the actual scratch pads. And you're going to want to use window rule v2. The important window rules to have are the float window rule, the size and move window rules, if you want to configure how big it is and where it appears on the screen. And the last rule you'll need is workspace special silent. As long as you have those window rules, you shouldn't have many problems starting the scratch pads, but I know from my own experience that forgetting to add these window rules will make it so that the scratch pads are not really working the way that you expect them to. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you've never tried using scratch pads before and you're using Hyperland, I definitely recommend you give Hyperland a try and configure a few scratch pads and see how they work. And again, scratch pads are not the only thing that Hyperland can do. Hyperland has several other plugins that you may want to explore to extend the functionality of your Hyperland. That's going to be it for today then. I hope you learned something. I hope you liked the video. And if you liked the video, please leave a like, please comment on the video, and please subscribe for more Linux FOSS content. If you disliked the video, please leave a dislike and let me know in the comment section down below what I can improve. And as always, have a great rest of your day.